Welcome to the Hillsborian Historian, my name is Rex. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow stated that youth comes but once in a lifetime. I suppose that's a given. Before Tampa Bay Center Floorland Mall was the shopping center of my youth. It was a magical place filled with Red Baron pizza and pinball machines. The mall was located on the corner of Bush Boulevard and Florida Avenue, a few miles north of downtown Tampa. In the early 1950s, there wasn't a whole lot in the area, except for the Floorland Outdoor Theater. Then, in 1958, J.M. Fields opened. The opening of this department store was a huge deal. And even Conway Twitty showed up. Like I said, there wasn't a whole lot out here back in those days. That white square next to the drive-in is J.M. Fields. And just to the south of it was Northgate Shopping Center. The outline of the Floorland Drive-In Theater seems to be the inspiration for the Floorland Mall logo. Trust me, there was no Wi-Fi back then. In 1971, ground was broken on the new mall. These guys are burying a time capsule. How cool is that? This picture shows how close Floorland Mall was to the interstate. Number one is J.M. Fields and Pantry Pride, two is Montgomery Ward, and three is the remainder of the mall. It was arraigned in 70s splendor, with carpet on the floor and tubular lights dropping from the ceiling. In October 1972, Montgomery Ward opened. In November, the big day finally arrived, and Floorland Mall would have its grand opening. I mean, look at all these stores. The Conti family was performing, and you could win all kinds of cool prizes. Get this, there was a seven-story hot air balloon with the name Floorland Mall on the side. You know that's awesome. Indeed, the sky was the limit. However, the mall always seemed to have an undercurrent of the criminal element. Like in December of 1972, when someone set fire to the pillows in J.M. Fields, causing an evacuation. Next to the mall, there was a set of stairs, and if you walked up them, you could eat at Frisch's Big Boy. But as a kid, I always ate at the Red Baron. There was something about that pizza that was just delicious. There was also a store called 21st Electronics, where you could imagine what life would be like in the next century. There was even a theater in the mall. And in 1973, the manager dressed up like Der Fuhrer to promote Hitler the last 10 days. Probably not the wisest choice. Every once in a while, there would be something cool like a petting zoo or Santa would pop up via helicopter. Even Miss June from Romper Room would come in. In 1974, a motorcycle on display at Pants Town was seized by the sheriff. It was stolen goods. Then there was the time that a man streaked through the mall naked and got arrested. Okay, so it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. For a brief moment, there was talk of putting a hotel on the Floorland Mall property but it never happened. All right, let's see what else happens. 
In 1975, there was this really cool roller coaster. I mean, look at this thing. These carnivals look like a lot of fun. In 1975, the bank in the Floorland Mall was robbed. Some people would identify this man as William Harris, a companion of Patty Hearst. But it was not William Harris, and the real robber was eventually caught. There was another guy who put a net in the night deposit box trying to fish out money. It seemed he wanted a net gain. On another robbery, they thought the guy might have jumped into the Goodwill box, but it turns out he wasn't there. In the center of the mall was this swan pirate ship thing. Sometimes me and my dad would sit on it while the rest of the family shopped. When Santa popped up, it looks like he turned the swans into reindeer. In December of 76, someone lit the Christmas trees in the parking lot on fire. This seemed to be an attempt to make you buy your Christmas trees from someone else. Someone was going to get coal in their stocking. In 77, there was a wedding in the mall. And look at all these people in attendance. Just before Christmas 1978, a bunch of escaped inmates were captured near Floorland Mall. Sadly, in 1979, both Pantry Pride and J.M. Fields left the mall. Zare would soon become a new anchor. Here is a list of stores in 1983. That same year, the body of a murder victim was found near the mall. Western Auto would have a store open at the mall that same year. There is an attempt to renovate the mall at this time and to regain some of the past glory days. In 1984, Flory the Fox popped up, but soon disappeared. This is a piano marathon that went on for over three days. In 1985, there was a car on fire in the parking lot. Sadly, this was in connection to another murder. Along with the bad publicity, one must remember that by the mid-1980s, there's a ton of retail shopping centers in the area. Floorland Mall is designated number five on this map, and it is in the middle of all of this competition. Sadly, in August of 1985, another murder victim was found behind Montgomery Ward. In 
1987, there is more talk of a renovation, as well as possibly changing the name of the mall to the gardens. But that never happened. This is a 1987 sidewalk sale that caught on fire. A bright spot in 1987 was a new children's museum. Look at all these cool activities. Fred Laswell, creator of Snuffy Smith, even went to Floridland Mall for the grand opening of the Children's Museum. For a brief time, there was a dinner theater at the mall, but it did not last long. Here is a list of stores in 1988. In the late 1980s, it seemed that there was always talk, so new owners and remodels. Many tenants were hoping to recapture the glory days of the early 70s, but the crimes continued. In 1989, Zare left and Ames took its place. In 1990, Floorland finally got its much needed renovation. The Children's Museum would also leave that year to find a new home in Safety Village. Shortly thereafter, another scandal when police raided a sex dungeon operating out of the exotic boutique. The following year, Montgomery Ward closed its Floorland location. Many were hoping for a revival of a Floorland Mall, but the writing, along with some graffiti, was on the wall. In 1992, a section on the southern end of the mall was demolished. Nineteen ninety two saw a flea market open at Floorland Mall. There was another grand opening, but incidents continued to plague this location. In 2000, the Floorland Flea Market ceased operations. Today, the Floorland Office Center houses primarily government offices. As for the stairway to Frisch's Big Boy, it's still there, but now it leads to a car dealership. As for the Children's Museum, it found a new home in Curtis Hickson Park. These are the current tenants along with the layout of the old mall. Oh, and if you know where that time capsule is, please let me know in the comments below. According to my research, it was never recovered and still lies buried along with most of the memories of the forgotten Floorland Mall.